All right, so now this is Tim again, and I will um, uh, explain the pooling work area. So we, as a background of this, we, we um, started initially looking at robots and uh, exploring robots, talking to various manufacturers. We found that we could start around $80,000 uh, with a basic robot system and then work from there up in multiples of tens of thousands to try to adjust to give the flexibility that we would need for the pooling method that we had in mind. And, um, and also we calculated time involved in, uh, in monitoring the robot. A robot we calculated could not work anywhere near as quickly as a, as a human uh, because of the rinsing involved uh, with reusing pipette tips for a robot. And, uh, and the expense would be high for pool. So we thought, uh, let's go ahead and get started on our project of making pools. This was some years ago, even before we were doing sequencing. And, uh, and just get going with what we can in an ordinary lab without spending a, a lot of money. So this is our pooling work area. What we came up with was mixer. We have a person who's called a mixer. We grow, and I'll put up some illustrations, and we'll have a video coming here shortly. But we work with 96 uh, well, deep well plates to inoculate and grow cultures on a, um, a high RPM shaker with good aeration. So the cultures, after they're grown and they sit on a bench, of course, the pellets settle to the bottom. So the, the person who's at the mixer station simply has the job of just before a plate advances on to pooling, that person goes through with a multi-channel pipette and remixes the tubes. Then they're brought over and set the, the, um, the, uh, the mixed plate moves to the other side of the bench and, uh, and advances to a position next to our pooling rack, which we'll show pictures of here. So we have a person who's sitting here who's called a pipetter, um, who, at, which we call station four. A person rotates from these stations, station one, two, three, four. So the pipetter sits at station four and does the actual pipetting from the source plate into the target pool receptacle tubes. Um, we also have a, a position we call the caller. It's a person who sits at a computer terminal and advances a projection. So it projects down and, and uh, highlights, as we'll show in pictures and video, um, the target tubes that the pipetter is to pipette into. And there's another person here just who we call the watcher. The watcher does nothing but quietly watch. And if there's ever a confusing moment, this person uh, has a, an eye from a distance and can say, this is what happened, makes notes of errors and things like that. So um, it takes about 23 minutes per plate, as I had in that previous slide, for a 96 well plate, which is enough for one, one person does a plate, and then uh, that person swaps out, and we advance through the rotation. This is a four-person rotation. Um, so this is our setup. Here's a little stand built out of pieces of wood and an LCD projector computed, uh, connected to a computer terminal. The computer terminal that has a little uh, runs a little software program that controls the output from the projector. So it's an output that's set up to match the geometry of the work area. So it shines down on the work area and shines lights and markings um, uh, that that uh, help the the pooler see where to pool samples. So that we we do the pooling manually. So an individual will sit down and take an aliquot out of out of one tube and pool uh, the aliquots into seven receptacle pools that match the combinatorial that Stefano just went through. So here's the, here's the, uh, the computer operator, whose name I can't remember from the previous slide, the, uh, the caller. He advances, he advances the, co the computer and calls out something like A1 or B2 or whatever, which means the position that the, that the pipetter should see as the next available position in the source plate. And then this is the pipetter pipetting and the watcher. This is a side-on view of the 91 uh, receptacle tubes laid out in two rows on a rack and the uh, plate with the source materials. And here's, uh, again, the, the work area with the lights shining down matching up with the receptacle pools so the pooler can see where to pipette. So now we go on to a little video that we have that lasts roughly two minutes, and I'll just talk over it. So this is the combinatorial pooling in action. So here again is the 96 wells, and you see the lights are in a certain position that mark the target wells. 
So a person sets the pipette down, picks up a new one, takes an aliquot, aliquots to the next seven pools. These are standard 15 milliliter screw cap plastic tubes in, in test tube racks, just fasten as a into position with a piece of tape so they don't move during the pooling. And uh, so we go through one sample after another. You can see the light over here, G10. This is getting near the end of the plate. By now, the, the mixer is over on another bench getting the next plate ready to set into position. Oh, so here's A12. The next pooler has come along. And, uh, and so we're working through the next plate. And so on and so on throughout the day. It takes roughly six hours to get through uh, one set of uh, 24 plates, which would handle 2,197 backs. So that's uh, it's sort of a little uh, team party that takes place each time the pooling happens, and it's distributing the work. It's a lot, actually fairly fun. So now I hand you back to Stefano.